One thing before I start this video, guys, I am starting a podcast with one of my friends, Gage Daniker, who I've been friends with for years now. He's also blind, and we are starting a podcast just about random topics. We're basically going to sit down and have a conversation every single week for one hour about whatever topic we bring up that week. It'll be random. We might talk about tech. We might talk about blindness, accessibility, disabilities, the news, just whatever topic comes to interest, we will be talking about, and I hope you subscribe to the podcast. It's on Apple Podcasts, it's on Spotify, Google Podcasts, all of the main podcast providers it is on, so please check it out. I would really appreciate it if you gave it a rating. Just let us know what you think, and yeah, the link for that will be in the description. Also, if you're not subscribed and you want to see more content about how a visually impaired or blind person uses different products or just navigates this crazy world we live in, then please subscribe because that is the type of content that I will be making in the future along with tech videos and random little sit down vlogs or whatever that I end up making. So I'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell so that you're notified when I make a new video. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's Steven, the blind kid, and I am going to make a video today about how blind people use their Apple devices because all Apple devices have great accessibility features and that is why I have used Apple devices for most of the time I have been visually impaired because they're very accessible right out of the box. This is just mainly to give you a glimpse of how I use my devices and how that's different from what a sighted person would use which is just the normal iPad in this case. I'm gonna use my iPad for this video to show you. I'll start screen recording shortly and we'll get right into it. So I'm gonna put my iPad screen on the other side right over there. Hopefully this works. Let me just show you how I use my iPad if I just pick it up. If I pick it up, there is a feature where you double tap the screen with three fingers and it zooms in. Now, this is what I use most of the time to navigate my iPad screen. It works the same way on the phone, it's just a smaller display. Um, basically, you use your three fingers to drag around the screen and see things. It blows it up quite a bit. And if I want to zoom out, I just double tap with three fingers and then move my fingers down the screen to make it smaller. Or I can do the opposite to make it larger. So really, if I find a good size, I can read this. It says Twitter. If I tap on the app, it'll start downloading it because I ran out of storage on my iPad recently. So yeah, that's how that works. And that is mainly what I will use, but there's a whole lot of other features that we're going to get into in the settings app. So we're gonna go right over here to settings. And um, over here on the left side of the display, there is an accessibility button that I'm sure you've seen if you have Apple products. It's on every single Apple product, even the Mac. Um, all these features do exist on the Mac. They're just different in the way that you interact with them. Because this is an iPad, it's all touch. So there's different gestures with your fingers and that type of thing. So the first thing here is voiceover. Now voiceover, if I go ahead and tap on it, voiceover is something that I use if I am on my phone and let's say I'm in the car on a bumpy road and I can't read it because my eyes have trouble actually focusing on individual objects, especially if they're smaller because my vision, while it's not too horrible, it's, it's blurry, but it's not blurry enough that I can't read small text at all. It's just straining to keep my eyes focused on it. So voiceover is great for that in my case because I'll use voiceover if I just can't read the text and zooming in is too much of a pain. So if I go ahead and turn it on, my iPad should start speaking. Voiceover on. It just said voiceover on. And now I can tap on something. Bullet double tap to activate the selected item and you could hear that it just spoke what I tapped on. And then if I want to go through all the different items on my screen, I can just slide, almost like I'm sliding through pictures. So I can just... Voice over practice, button, speaking rate. just swipe it. Speaking rate, speak. And it's reading everything down the display in chronological order as it appears. And I can change the speed of the voice. I can make the voice way faster. 
and I do know, I do know blind people who use it at that speed, but yeah, you can really change a lot. 60%, 50%, Now you can change almost anything about the voice, you can edit all kinds of things. If you use braille as a blind person, you can set it up to have a little braille display connected to it and you can feel the braille and it'll tell you what's on the display that way. There's a lot of options with voiceover that I'm not gonna get into because I don't even use them all. And there's a lot of options that I don't even use because I don't need it extensively. Like I said, this is something that I just use whenever it comes in handy. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. So now that I have that off, we can go back. And I have the second thing on the list, zoom. Now this was what I was showing you earlier. This is what I use almost all the time to zoom in and read my iPad's display or my phone's display. It also works on my Apple TV. It works on the Apple Watch, believe it or not. That's a really small screen to zoom in on, but it does work. Um, yeah, it's the same thing like I talked about earlier, but there's a whole bunch of options that just make it really easy to use your iPad just like anyone else, but with a little help, with a little zoom. So now if I go back, there is the option to use the different display and text size options. So if I tap on that, it opens a whole list of different things that I can change, including the bold text, which I actually do normally have on. I'm not sure why it's off right now, but that is something that I use quite often. Bold text is great because it just makes everything easier to read for me. Um, I'm not sure if you noticed when I turned it on there, it made everything much more bold and um, prominent so I don't have any trouble seeing any of the text then when I zoom in it's very easy to read and even a lot of sighted people I know use this just because they like the way the text looks when it's more bold uh, there's also larger text which I don't use because I find it more simple to zoom in on things but you can make the text itself larger on the display so you don't have to zoom but I find it easier to just zoom in because then I'm not missing any information. Sometimes stuff gets cut off if you turn the large text up all the way. Now there's also reduced transparency and a whole bunch of other options that make the text more prominent so you can read better because a lot of people have trouble when there isn't enough contrast. So if I have some text on a screen where there is some sort of transparent background and a lot of color, it can be really difficult to read. So some people like to have that on. Most of these I don't use. Like I said, I'm pretty basic when it comes to the accessibility settings, but I do really appreciate that they are all here. There's a lot to choose from and I love that about Apple. Apple usually isn't like good at giving people a lot of options, but in terms of accessibility, they really do have you covered out of the box with whatever product you buy. Now, I know this sounds like an Apple ad and it's really not, but I just really like the way that they work, the way that the products work for visually impaired people. There's a whole bunch of other things like spoken content that I use. There's something called speak selection. So if I go into any app and select text, it'll actually read it to me if I hit a little speak button. So let me just open up a web page real quick. We could go up to apple.com. And then once we go into apple.com, if I tap and hold on any text, it will read it to me. So let me tap and hold on Oh, that's not actual text, that's a link. Hold on, I think I need to go to learn more. But once I go to some actual text, here we go. If I select this paragraph and hit the speak button, which is right up here. Say hello to the fastest smartphone chip ever, 5G speed, an advanced dual And it's reading system. about the iPhone it's 12. Shield for four times better drop performance. There we go. Brighter, more colorful OLED display. iPhone 12 is a total powerhouse in two great sizes. So now I can learn all about the iPhone 12 and it's reading it for me. So if my eyes are really tired or I just don't feel like reading it, um, or if it's really hard to read text, sometimes Zoom doesn't really help with that and I find this feature really helpful. So there's also something called typing feedback, which I know a lot of my friends use because I have a lot of blind friends. Um, they use this, which actually will read you things as you type it out. So if I type 
a word, you can have it set to just read every single word you type. So if you type anything and then hit the space bar, it automatically reads that out loud, so then you know what you typed. And this is really helpful for people like me who don't use voiceover. I don't use it, I used to. It just kind of annoyed me after a while hearing every single thing I typed, but some people like it. And again, the option is there. It's really helpful to have these options. You can have it set to speak words, characters, hints, autocorrected text, so if it autocorrects then it'll tell you, which is honestly really helpful. I used to like that a lot. Like I said, I don't really anymore just because I think it got too complicated for me and I didn't really need it all the time. Um, then there's different voice options. There is a plethora of English voices that you can use for all these speaking features, which again is great. Having those options is great because everyone has a different preference when it comes to accessibility and what works for them. And then there's also an option for different pronunciations. You can really, like I said, customize the heck out of all this stuff. And then there's one last option that I do sometimes use, audio descriptions. And basically it will turn on audio descriptions, which is basically a spoken description of what's happening on the screen for people who are blind. And this option is great in settings because it enables that then across your entire iPad, entire device. So if you're watching any type of video anywhere, whether it's YouTube or some other website, then you will always have audio descriptions on when they're available. And I love that option. It wasn't always there, but when they added it a few years ago, I absolutely loved it. So that's all of the accessibility features that I tend to use on my iPad. If you're also blind or visually impaired, let me know in the comments what features you like to use on any of your devices. Doesn't have to be Apple devices. I just really, really like Apple. As you can probably tell from my channel and any other social media of mine, if you follow me anywhere else, um, yeah, I really do like my iPad a lot. I use all Apple devices and it's really helpful. So let me know what works for you, what kind of videos you want me to make next. Um, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate that. Have an excellent day. Thanks for watching.